Welcome to our world news program. Today, we're diving into the latest trends in real estate, fashion highlights from London, and China's media strategies in the Philippines. Investors are increasingly favoring student housing and service departments over traditional office spaces, as these sectors promise better returns amid inflation concerns. Meanwhile, London Fashion Week is celebrating its 40th anniversary, showcasing a dazzling array of designs from both emerging and established talents. Lastly, we explore how China is trying to reshape its image in the Philippines through media partnerships, despite facing skepticism from the public. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. South China Morning Post reports that investors are increasingly drawn to student housing, co-living spaces, and service departments within the Asia-Pacific region, as traditional real estate sectors like offices and logistics begin to lose their appeal. Property consultancy CBRE highlights that these emerging living assets, which have been underinvested in, provide a promising opportunity for higher returns, especially as inflation concerns grow. The demand for multifamily properties has surged, driven by expatriate needs and low home ownership rates. With global central banks expected to cut borrowing costs, the living sector is positioned to attract institutional investors looking to diversify their portfolios. Japan leads the region in investments, with its multifamily market offering a notable yield advantage over office spaces. South China Morning Post also covers the vibrant highlights of London Fashion Week, celebrating its 40th anniversary. The event showcased a mix of established and emerging designers, with Burberry attempting to revitalize its brand under creative director Daniel Lee. The collection featured a blend of utilitarian heritage and glamour, with standout pieces like trench-inspired dresses and feather-embellished jackets. Meanwhile, J.W. Anderson's show continued to push boundaries with innovative designs, while Nancy Dojaka's revealing yet tasteful garments captured attention. Richard Quinn's haute couture pieces dazzled at the Dorchester, and Simone Roche's romantic collection incorporated playful elements, highlighting her consistent yet evolving aesthetic. The overall atmosphere was one of creativity and exploration, reflecting London's unique fashion landscape. South China Morning Post further explores China's strategic media efforts to reshape its image in the Philippines, aiming to present itself as a reliable infrastructure partner amidst skepticism over debt and maritime disputes. A recent study reveals that China has intensified its narrative-shaping tactics, particularly during the pandemic and rising territorial tensions. By partnering with local media outlets and influencers, China seeks to leverage their credibility to counteract negative perceptions. However, despite these efforts, skepticism remains prevalent among Filipinos, with a significant majority viewing China as a threat. The report underscores the challenges China faces in influencing local narratives, as negative events often overshadow its positive messaging. While there are signs of adaptation in China's public diplomacy, the effectiveness of its charm offensive remains uncertain. South China Morning Post reports on a recent documentary aired by Chinese state television that vividly illustrates a potential amphibious assault on Taiwan, coinciding with the People's Liberation Army's intensified training for such operations. The 20-minute segment showcases a range of military exercises, including large-scale helicopter air assaults and the deployment of advanced surveillance and strike drones. It opens with a soldier expressing a deep yearning for national unity, highlighting Beijing's stance on Taiwan as an integral part of its territory. The documentary emphasizes the threats faced by helicopters from man-portable air defense missiles, illustrating the urgency for the PLA to adapt and innovate in their battle strategies. The exercises also showcase China's advanced naval capabilities, including the Type 055 destroyer and its role in electronic warfare, as well as the long-range rocket systems that could easily target Taiwan from the mainland. Yahoo US highlights the proactive measures taken by a global coalition of virus hunters dedicated to identifying emerging viral threats, particularly those exacerbated by climate change. This coalition, spearheaded by the Abbott Pandemic Defense Coalition, has uncovered various viral outbreaks, such as a tick-borne disease in Thailand and an Orapush virus outbreak in Colombia. By sequencing thousands of viral samples, they aim to develop rapid diagnostic tests to contain potential pandemics before they escalate. The coalition's work underscores the critical need for vigilance in monitoring infectious diseases, especially as climate change alters the habitats of disease vectors and increases the risk of new outbreaks. The interconnectedness of environmental changes and public health is emphasized, with experts warning that a viral threat in one part of the world could quickly spread globally. Japan Times reveals that the Hong Kong government is on the verge of releasing its first policy statement on the application of artificial intelligence in the finance sector. This initiative, led by the Financial Services and Treasury Bureau, 
aims to establish a framework of guidelines focusing on the ethical use of AI and its integration into various financial practices, including trading and investment banking. Although the specific details of the policy are still being finalized, the move is seen as a significant step towards embracing AI technology and finance, reflecting a broader global trend as governments grapple with the implications and potential of AI. The anticipated guidelines are expected to enhance Hong Kong's position as a hub for innovative financial technologies, as officials gather industry feedback to shape the future of AI in the financial landscape. South China Morning Post highlights the need for Hong Kong to embrace the implications of its low birth rate instead of merely seeking to increase it. The author argues that rather than focusing solely on raising the birth rate, society should address the challenges it presents, such as a shrinking workforce and an aging population. The letter suggests that attracting overseas talent could be a viable solution, as seen in other countries facing similar issues. Additionally, a stable low birth rate could lead to less competition for resources potentially benefiting societal equity and even contributing to environmental sustainability by reducing consumption. Nikkei Asia reports on the successful debut of Medea Group's shares on the Hong Kong exchange, which saw an 8% rise following a significant $4 billion offering. The company's chairman emphasized this listing as a strategic move to enhance its global development. With the offering oversubscribed, Medea's stock surge reflects investor confidence, particularly as the Chinese government promotes appliance upgrades to stimulate consumption. The report also notes that Medea's dual listing will facilitate access to foreign capital, especially amid rising tensions between the US and China, marking a significant step in the company's international expansion efforts. In another piece from South China Morning Post, the upcoming keynote address by Beijing's top diplomat in Hong Kong at the British Chamber of Commerce event signifies a shift towards greater engagement with the international business community. This marks the first time a central government representative will deliver a keynote speech at such an event, indicating a willingness to foster foreign relations and enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness. Analysts view this as a positive step to rebuild confidence among foreign investors and as part of a broader strategy to attract talent and investment, showcasing a pragmatic approach that separates economic interests from political tensions. Associated Press, in a devastating wave of wildfires sweeping across Peru, at least 15 lives have been lost and over 3,000 hectares of land have been scorched, according to recent reports. Prime Minister Gustavo Adrianzan revealed that human activity is to blame for igniting these fires, which are currently raging in 22 of the country's 24 regions. The situation has been exacerbated by challenging weather conditions, including smoke and strong winds that hinder firefighting efforts from the air. A civil defense report highlights that since July, 15 fatalities have occurred, with 98 individuals injured and more than 1,800 people affected by the disaster. The livestock sector has also suffered, with the loss of 334 animals. Experts from Peru's National Forest and Wildlife Service, SURFER, have pointed out that climate change is intensifying the conditions that fuel these fires, as prolonged droughts and fierce winds turn vegetation into highly flammable material. The Amazon region, bordering Ecuador, is facing some of the most severe fire challenges, as noted by Civil Defense Chief Juan Urcarigui. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.